ಸಂಗೋಪಕ್ರಮೋಪನಿಷದೈರ್ ಗಾಯಂತ ಸಾಮಗ ಜಸ್ಯಾಂತಂಗನಸುರಗನ ದೇವಾಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಆರ್ ಸಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ವಿದೌಟ್ ಅ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಹೂಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಐ ಜಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಬೈ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ನೇಮ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ ಹೂಸ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಸಂಗ್ ಥ್ರು ದಿ ರ್ಯಾಪ್ಚರಸ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಬಟ್ ಹೂಸ್ ಲಿಮಿಟ್ ಲೆಸ್ ಅನ್ ಇನ್ಫಿನಿಟ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ನನ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕಾಂಪ್ರಿಹೆಂಡ್ but again whom the sages and devotees realize within their hearts in their deepest contemplation him we salute again and again may he shine in our hearts manifest there in all his glory and dispel all darkness and ignorance om shanti 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 peace 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 well my affectionate greetings to you all i am meeting you after a long time before i begin my subject proper which is silence i wish to read out to you a prose verse that was written by one of my disciples in santa barbara what need is there of yoga if we may feel thy presence mother what need for discrimination austerities renunciation if we may have the grace of thy loving presence but what higher contemplation can there be than that of thy infinite incomprehensible power ah i see myself sitting after a afar off sitting in the sea of infinity gazing into thy bosom beholding all existence all energy in the lotus of thy bosom it is silence what <coughs> higher contemplation can there be <coughs> than that of the all confu- all compassionate loving grace i am sitting at thy holy feet holding fast to thy holy feet gazing into thy incomprehensible face feeling the love of the transcendental grace which shines from thy pure heart it is silence my subject is silence religion as i have often explained to you has been defined by swami ji as the unfoldment of divinity already within man but this divinity remains hidden and it is said that brahma vidya the knowledge of brahman is to be had from a guru an illumined teacher books cannot teach you you see every science has a method of its own similar as for instance if you want to study chemistry and if you say simply oh chemistry come to me it does not come you have to go to the laboratory and burn your hand from time to time 
in the acid before you can learn anything about chemistry. Similarly, religion has a method of its own. Books cannot give you that illumination, that which is, remains hidden within you. So you have to learn it from an illumined teacher. In the Upanishads we read, Sravanam, you hear about this truth from the lips of the Guru. Mananam, then you reason about it. You don't accept it as soon as you hear it. You reason upon it, otherwise you will misunderstand. And then after you have understood it intellectually, then meditate upon it. So again, it has to be learned from the Guru. Now, there are some rare souls who can transmit that power of spirituality through silence. You see, I've heard about Sri Ramakrishna and about Swamiji. Even when Swamiji was still a disciple of Sri Ramakrishna. He felt that power of transmitting and so he wanted one of his brother disciples to hold his hand and there passed, he said, there passed an electricity through his body. And Sri Ramakrishna, I have heard from some of his disciples, he would gaze at him gaze at the disciple while he would be sitting silently and there would be the unfoldment of that divinity in him. You'd, you'd experience samadhi just as Sri Ramakrishna would look at him or would give him a touch. Now I've seen in my master also how there would be people sitting together, so many people, and they would come to him with their problems from everyday problems, spiritual problems. And perhaps Maharaj would not be talking anything about God, but as they would go out of the house, of the room, their problems would be solved, and they would get something. And we, the monastic disciples, as we'd be sitting at his feet, he could raise our consciousness into a higher level. This we have seen from day to day. But again, Sri Ramakrishna initiated with mantra. So did Swamiji, and so, so did Maharaj, and so did Holy Mother. And uh, now about Holy Mother, that reminds me, as I touch her toe, when I bow, bow down to her, I'd feel a sort of electric shock. And it was very pleasant. So she transmitted the power, as it were, in silence. Then again they would give that mantra, give mantra to the disciples, so that you see, small fries like us could transmit that power with the help of the Word. In one of the prayers of Shankara we read a pen picture of Shank that pen picture he, he paints. The Guru, who is young, is sitting under a tree there were some disciples sitting around him. They were old. The Guru was young. I am not young. <laughs> but the, it, he is young because the truth of God is always young. It never gets old. And the disciples, though they may be young, they are still old because they have all kinds of past and superstitions and ideas 
<coughs> and false ideas. And the Guru would be sitting in silence, the disciples would be seated in silence and their doubts would be resolved. <coughs> now, this idea of silence again implies the method and means as well as the supreme goal. For instance, we read in the Upanishads, Shantoyam Atma, his name is, is silence. And through silence alone, you can reach Him. You have to learn to go into silence. But what is exactly meant by this going into silence? Oftentimes it is misunderstood. I knew of, of a so-called holy man, he came to this country also. They are all coming, so many. <laughs> And he would carry a slate with him and you, he would keep silent, you ask a question, anything mundane or anything, and you would write it down on the slate so that you could read it. And then again, you see, I may make you go into silence by make your, making your mind blank by giving you a hit on the head. <laughs> You see, there is that mistaken idea that to go into silence means to make your mind blank. And that is taught by the Westerners in many of the places. In, the, in Patanjali's yoga aphorisms we read, Patanjali defines yoga, that is how to have, how to have union with God, as the com complete control of the thought waves of the mind. Complete control of the thought waves of the mind, which means that your conscious, subconscious and unconscious thoughts have to be completely brought under control and focus your mind upon your ideal, the truth, the chosen ideal of Godhead. And Meister Eckhart, for instance, makes it again as it were, a commentary upon that yoga aphorism by saying, there must be perfect stillness in the soul before God can whisper his word into, God, into it. Before that light of God can shine in the soul and transform the soul into God. When the passions are stilled and worldly desires are silenced. Then the word of God can be heard in the soul. The ideal is to be achieved and also silence is the method and means. Now again, According to Hindu ideal, what are the ideal? What are the ideals? You see, everybody cannot be a monk. You see, if you study, for instance, the teachings of Christ, wonderful, but it has no place for householders. But in Hinduism, it has place for householders as well as for monks and nuns. And so, they point out, there are four pursuits of life. Dharma, that is, first, as a student, you attain some ethical virtues, which I shall explain later. And then, artha. Of course, from this student life you can enter into monastic life or you can enter into householder's life. And artha means you have to have economic security. And then 
third is kamo, that is some of the legitimate desires that you have need to be fulfilled. And then moksha. Moksha means attainment of God. Of course, technically it means freedom from karma and reincarnation. Technically it means. But remember that even as a householder, you have to keep that ideal in view, moksha. When you, um, uh, when you try to have economic security or when you are trying to have that uh, fulfillment of your legitimate desires, at the same time you should have that ideal, that your ideal is to realize God to be free from karma and reincarnation. And that is possible only when you have seen the Godhead, the reality. As in the Upanishads we read, I'm, I'll quote to you this verse in Sanskrit because from the Upanishads, because this is the verse that I first heard from the lips of Maharaj, my Master. Viddhate hridaya granti siddhante sarva samsaya tas kshiyante chasya karmani tas mindrishte parabare. The knot of the heart, the knot of ignorance of the heart is loosened. All doubts cease to exist. All the effects of good and bad deeds are exhausted. In him, who has attained him who is both personal and impersonal. In other words, as Sri Ramakrishna says, you can see God, but that seeing is not enough. You have to talk to him. That is also not enough. You have to be united with Him. You have to be completely, complete union with Him you have to have. Then it is that you have realized, you have attained the fulfilment. He used to give an illustration in a dark room. Uh, the lover goes and she touches the bed. No, this is not he. Then he touches the feet. Ah. I have got him. Then he wakes up. Then there is union. And there is that complete stillness. It is a worldly example, but this can apply to God. Many of his disciples, when they were young, they would ask Ramakrishna to explain what that samadhi is. And you try to explain and ex try to speak and speak. And every time you try to speak, you go into samadhi. <laughs> so he said, uh, gave the illustration, the salt doll went to measure the depth of the ocean. What happens? <laughs> Similarly, when the mind goes into samadhi, it is like that. And in this, in, in this uh, instance I will quote what Maharaj said to me at one time, that he saw Sri Ramakrishna going into samadhi many times every day of his life. And he saw Swamiji 
going into that samadhi, the highest, only three times. Just think of that, the greatness of Sri Ramakrishna. Shankara in the Viveka Chudamuni, he writes this about this state. This state of silence is a state of complete peace in which the intellect ceases to occupy itself with the unreal. In this silence, the great soul who knows and is one with Brahman enjoys unmingled bliss forever. Now again it does not mean that he does not speak. He enjoys that unmingled bliss but at the same time he can teach. He comes down from that plane. Maharaj told me at one time, what do I see occasionally? I see God in so many masks, the mask of a saint, the mask of a thief, the mask of a lustful man. It's a mask. So when I see God in so many masks appearing before me, how can I teach? How can God teach God? Then I come down from that plane and then I see your mistakes and try to correct you. So you see, as Ramakrishna said, Shankara or all, all the great avatars had to keep their ego, a little ego, ego of knowledge he called. There are two kinds of egos. Ego of knowledge and ego of ignorance. Ego of ignorance is, I am so intelligent, I am so big, I have so much wealth, and I am greater than the rest. But the ego of knowledge does not feel that he is greater than anybody. He sees there is God in, hidden in every being. And with that ego of knowledge, he tries to bring out that hidden God from each soul. As already stated, that it is the unfoldment of divinity already within each one of us. In this connection, philosophically, it is said that it is not that you have to, you have to accomplish something that you have not got. For instance, if you want to have medical knowledge, knowledge of medicine, that knowledge is not within you. You have to study. You have to learn. And you have to go to college and so on and so forth. But this knowledge of God is already within each one of us. It remains only hidden. So it's an accomplished fact. For instance, another instance I shall give you. Somebody may say there's a gold mine there. You may dig and dig and dig, but it may not be there. It may be there or it may not be there. But in this situation, if you dig, you are bound to get it. There is no failure in spiritual life as long as you keep up this struggle. Remember that. There is no failure in spiritual life as long as you keep up this struggle. But there are obstacles, and those obstacles have to be removed. As in the Gita we read, uh, Ajnani na abhritam jnanam 
by the, through ignorance, that knowledge remains hidden, hence people become deluded. Or in the Upanishads there is a beautiful illustration. As one not knowing that a golden treasure lies buried beneath his feet may walk over it again and again you, uh, yet never find it. So all beings live every moment in this city of Brahman ye, uh, yet never find him because of the veil of ignorance in which he is concealed. Now you remember St. Paul's verse, we live, move and have our being in God. Or the words of Jesus, the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. What is this ignorance? What is this darkness? This darkness has two phases. One, one, in one aspect, it covers that truth that is within each one of us. And it creates something that has no existence. What is that? Our sense of ego. If you analyze what this ego is, to give the illustration of what Sri Ramakrishna gave, you take an onion and try to find the substance within it and you peel one layer after another and there remains nothing. Similarly, if we try to analyze what is this ego and people many times say, I have my personality, I have, an, I have my individuality, but can you tell me what your individuality or personality is? If you analyze, you will find it has no existence. For instance, if a thief says, I'll lose my individuality if I do not steal. So, similarly, we have to lose our individuality, we have to lose our personality, and we have to realize our oneness with God. And in that we are all one. In one ocean we are living. That ocean of Brahman, each one of us is living. And some of us is a big wave and another is simple ripple. In another place Swami Vivekananda said, in all your life you have seen nothing but Brahman. But we don't know. Now, what are those obstacles that we have to remove? It is said that attachment, aversion and clinging to life. We become attached to things that give us pleasure. Then we are averse to things that give us suffering and pain. And then there is this clinging to life, to this surface life. It is so great in us that those of you who meditate and have gone deeper will find that you are about to lose your consciousness and then you get a little frightened and wake up. This, this clinging to life is so great. But as Jesus said, he who loves this life shall lose it. Now again, uh, how to be freed from our this ego, attachment and aversion and clinging to life. How can we be freed from those? It is said 
that when the, uh, to, to quote the Chandogya Upanishad, when the food is purified, heart becomes pure. And remember the teaching of Jesus, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. He doesn't say they shall see God after death, you know. What nonsense. <laughs> and I was just seeing in the paper today, uh, they are trying to, uh, the, all the great ministers are getting together to humanize their religion. Enough humanization has been done. <laughs> and where are we? Yes, hospitals have been built, schools have been built, but you have to pay money for that. It's a business. <laughs> so what is the uh, food purified means? And what it means by blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You see, we have attachment and aversion and clinging to life. It doesn't mean that we have to run away from the world. But live in the world. But move amongst the objects of senses without any attachment or aversion. In other words, whatever you gather, food does not mean just what we eat, but whatever we gather through our senses. You see, as we move amongst people and objects and things, there comes attachment and aversion. But learn to see the presence of God everywhere. You see, the, the goal, make the goal the method and means also. So move amongst the sense objects without attachment and aversion. Well, one, uh, you know, many times they try to be free, you know, be, uh, those who misunderstand the teachings, they try to free themselves from attachment and aversion because, for instance, if lust arises, they try to whip themselves until blood comes out and so that there would not be any lust. But what good is that? Can they think of God? So again, you see how they misunderstand spirituality. So what does this mean again? I asked my master one time, what is austerity? And he said, practice of the control of passions. Swamiji, Swami Vivekananda has compared this stillness, this silence, to extreme ex activity. He gives the illustration. A four powerful horses are driving the carriage down the hill, and the driver who is holding the rein and is holding in such a way that the carriage is standing still. That is the illustration given. The mind tries to run here and there. The mind takes you here and there and everywhere. And you have to hold the rein of the mind and keep that under control. In the Upanishads also that very illustration is given that uh, you are riding in a chariot with horses 
and you hold the rein tight so that the horses would not move away from the road that you are going. Uh, this, this clamoring of senses and passions can be controlled if we always keep in mind the ideal. The ideal is that we desire liberation, we desire God. If this ideal you keep in your mind all the time, then you will find that you are so able to control the passions. Sri Ramakrishna used to say that people are mostly charmed by the creation of God. Who wants the Creator? You see, of thousands of people, one per chance seeks to find God. And they are all enamored by the creation. Nobody wants the Creator. As, as we read in the Saint John of the Cross, the more the soul clings, cleaves to created things, relying on its own strength, by habit and inclination, the less is it disposed for this union, because it does not completely resign itself into the hands of God, that He may transform it supernaturally. In the Gita we find the same ideal. It says, when his mind is under perfect control and freed from all desires, no, so that he becomes absorbed in the Atman and nothing else. But again, is it so easy? As when Arjuna was taught, the disciple was taught by Sri Krishna this truth, Arjuna said, a restless man's mind is so strongly shaken in the grip of the senses, gross and grown hard with stubborn desires for what is worldly. How shall he tame it? Truly, I think the wind is no wilder. And Sri Krishna answers, Yes, Arjuna, the mind is restless, no doubt, and hard to subdue, but it can be brought under control by constant practice and by the exercise of dispassion. Certainly, if a man has no control over his ego, he will find this yoga difficult to master. But a self-controlled man can master it if he struggles hard and use the right means. What are the, the right means? Practice and dispassion. In the Patanjali Yoga, for instance, we read, you can control it by practice and by dispassion or discrimination. Always discriminate and try to practice. Whenever we would complain to our master, he would simply say, practice, practice, practice. Now, you know, what is our habit, what is our character after all? How can the character can be transformed? It is formed from habits, nothing else. You are good or bad according to the habits that you have formed. Our character is nothing but a bundle of habits. And in order that we can uh, throw out that bundle of habits, we can create, we have to create, substitute 
another bundle of habits. So it is taught again in the in this in the psychology of yoga that you must practice uh, 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 try never to hurt anybody in thought, word or deed, then try to be truthful in every way, but speak the truth, but not a harsh truth, and then non-covetousness, not to covet others. Uh, wealth or not to be greedy. Then again regular habits have to be formed. For instance, cleanliness, physical and mental, both. Physical cleanliness, you know, you have the saying in this country, cleanliness is next to godliness. So physical cleanliness is very important also. And then mental cleanliness is how, how to do that, achieve that, make a regular habit. Say, you are pure, you are pure, you are pure. You have chanted the name of the Lord, you have become pure. Whatever condition you may be, chant the name of the Lord and know for certain that you have become pure. Then be contented with your circumstances. You see, there is always a discontentment that I could be in a better condition. And instead of that, be contented, but bring divine discontentment that I have not achieved anything yet. You see, this as you progress spiritually, when there is spiritual progress, you don't feel that you are progressing. And there is that divine discontentment. One time Maharaj scolded me very much that you are contented with your state. No. He said, light, more light, more light more light. Is there any end to it, my son? So that divine discontentment has to be brought. I have not achieved yet anything. There is more light to be achieved. And then study. Study of scriptures, regular study of scriptures. That would help you in your path. And then give up the results of all your actions to God. These are the reg then there, there are the regular habits of prayer and meditation. As you practice, then And this practice you can make in everything, while you are eating, while you are drinking, while you are walking. You see, you can think of God. Maharaj used to say, this is Sahaja Yoga, easy way of attaining union with God. And in the words of Swamiji, Day and night think of God, and as far as possible think of nothing else. The daily necessary thoughts can all be thought through God. Eat to Him, drink to Him, sleep to Him, see Him in all, talk of God to others. You know, this is not done in this country. They uh, talk about weather. 
<laughs> because that is the safest thing. <laughs> Talk of God to others, this is most beneficial. In the Gita also it is said that way. When the whole soul pours in a continuous current to God, when there is no time to think of anything but God, then will come into your heart that infinite wonderful bliss of love. All desires are but beads of glass. True love of God increase every, increases every moment and is ever new. You know, in this connection I may point out that the love of man to woman, love of boy and girl, is not lasting. It, it decreases, but love for God increases. The, tr the love of God increases every moment and is ever new. It is to be known by feeling it. Love is the easiest of disciplines. It waits for no logic. It is natural. We need no demonstration, no proof. Re regarding Reasoning is limiting something by our own mind. We think, we throw a net and catch something and then say that we have demonstrated it, but never, never can we catch God in our net. But He is only caught by love. You know, Jashoda, the mother of Krishna, uh, somebody said that Krishna had eaten some mud when he was a baby. And so she wanted to take the mud out of, her, out of his mouth. And as he opened his mouth, he saw the whole universe within his mouth. Then said, Oh Lord, I don't want I don't want to see you that way. I want to love you as my baby. You see, as you practice, then you feel the grace of God. And anybody who has experienced anything will tell you that it is through the grace of God. But self-effort is needed. There is the saying of Sri Ramakrishna, the, grease of grace is, the, the breeze of grace is blowing all the time. You have to, in order that you can catch that breeze, you have to set sail to it. So in order to catch that breeze of grace, you have to practice. And as you practice meditation from day to day, one day, when you are not expecting, suddenly something happens. And then you feel it is His grace, grace, grace.
shall see him face to face inside. Hush the tongue, close the eyes, and you shall feel the Lord. You shall feel his presence near inside. Satoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya Mritorma Amritangamaya Abir Abir Maidi Rudrajate Dakshinangukang Tainamang Pahinitam Om Lead us from the unreal to the real. Lead us from death to immortality. Lead us from darkness to light. Light us through and through and guide us evermore with thy loving presence. Om Shanti 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 Peace, peace, peace. Well, I thank you. <coughs> 